Good morning. morning. Welcome to Bethesda Presbyterian Church. We are gathered here on the Lord's Day, and it's good to be here on the Lord's Day. We have several announcements today. Uh, First, if you're a visitor, we're glad you're here, and we invite you to sign uh, our friendship pads, which should be in your pews, so that we can reach out to you. And if you have any questions about baptism or Bethesda Presbyterian Church or Jesus Christ, uh, I can reach out to you or an elder will reach out to you uh, if you leave your contact information. Also, um, today is a special day in the life of Bethesda because it is Consecration Sunday. Consecration Sunday is a day where we culminate our stewardship campaign and focus on not just giving our time, treasure, and talents, but giving ourselves back to God. So there will be a moment in the service when you can come forward down here uh, before the platform and we can pray a prayer of consecration together if you'd like. We also have uh, the Wynn family joining our numbers today as members. So Christy and Jeff, if you just raise your hands, they're joining us today. And their daughters, uh, Birdie and Taylor, will be baptized as well. So we welcome you and we welcome your family who have come in from, from far away, I understand. Uh, At the end of the service, we also will have a painless congregational meeting. We did this before, and uh, we broke a few rules, but we will do it again, and we will do it quickly and painlessly. So please um, be prepared for that. If you intend to nominate somebody to be elected to be on the nominating committee, make sure you ask them so that they're not surprised when we have the congregational meeting. A good time to, to have done this will have been maybe a couple weeks ago. But if you haven't, you can do it during the passing of the peace. Now, if you nominate a lot of people, we're going to be here voting. So just remember that. Also, tonight, we have a community service, an ecumenical service with Page Memorial. Uh, They will be coming here. I'll be presiding, but their pastor, Eric Joyce, will be preaching here at Bethesda. So please come tonight at 5 and we will be worshiping with the Methodist Church, a community Thanksgiving service. I told him not to preach so long. So, just so you know, I told him to preach shorter. Also, we have a deacons meeting today at 2, and we have a session meeting today at 3 before that service. So deacons meet at 2, the session will meet at 3. Also, announcements are not over. Uh, Pending the session's approval, I will have morning prayer on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. in the sanctuary throughout Advent. Uh, So if you're interested, we will do that Wednesday at 9 here in the sanctuary throughout Advent. Also, there is an Advent devotional study taking place. Betty Pope, I believe Betty is here today. Will you raise your hand? She is continuing an Advent study, and I believe she'd be happy if you would jump in if you did not make the last one. There is a Bible and Church in Israel study which will be also on November 28th at 6 p.m. if you're interested. And also, next week we will have a very different service. The Presbytery will be coming, and Tommy Miller, Lee Miller's son, Lee is back here, he will be ordained here during our regular worship service with uh, former pastor um, uh, Reverend Hudson preaching. So not David, but Sue will be preaching for Tommy's uh, service. There's one more announcement. Janet, please.
again, remember this is a part of the missions committees and a part of the church's mission to the community. So if you'd like to share the love of Christ, please consider participating in this event. If there are no more announcements, let's worship the Lord. The Lord be with you. Please stand if you're able, and we will call to worship in word. O Lord, blessed are you, the God of our ancestor Israel. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. Joyfully, we offer you thanks and praise. In your hand are power and might to make great and to give strength to all. Who am I to be able to offer willingly? All, All things, things come from you, and of your own have we given back to you. We offer our gifts freely and joyfully for the building of your kingdom. Thank you for the opportunity to return a portion of what we have been given. Amen. Let us now turn and sing hymn 37, Let All Things Now Living.
Please remain standing. Holy Scripture tells us that God so loved us, He put forward His Son as a sacrifice for our sins. Once and for all, on the cross. And on our part, it tells us also that the sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken and contrite heart and spirit. So as we pray the prayer of confession today, I invite you to let the love of God break your heart. Let us pray. Forgive us, O Lord, for when our faith has not been lively, our hearts inattentive and our love impure. Forgive us, O Lord, for overlooking our baptism, forgetting divine promises, and quelling the spirit you graciously send. Help us, Lord, to believe in the great promises, to seek your will for our lives, and through your spirit, reconsecrate us to yourself. In the name of Christ, amen. Hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Christ came into the world to save sinners. Christ has died for us. He's risen for us. He reigns over us and he prays for us. In Jesus' name, you are forgiven. Be at peace. And all God's people said, Amen. We will pass the peace after the baptism today. So hold the peace for now. <laughs> Let us sing. Except for those who went with me, right? No. I'm glad to be back. Today, today we're going to talk about faith. Faith, okay? But before we do that, I want to ask you a question. Do you know what trust is? You trust somebody? What's trust? What else? Go ahead. believe in something or someone? Go ahead. To have faith in someone. Yes, or something. Go ahead. That's right. What do you guys think? What's this side thing? What's trust? Basically the same thing, right? Whom in your life do you trust? God, Jesus, your mother, your father, is it in that order? <laughs> yes. yes okay. Your sister, you trust your sister? I don't know everyone that would say that. <laughs> That's right. If you make a promise, someone makes a promise you can't break it, you have to trust it. Go ahead. Yeah. What do you think? What? Who, whom do you trust? What about a teacher? Do you, do you trust your teachers? What about your pastor? I hope so. You trust the pastor? That's good. Thank you. But you, go ahead. What, what did you want to say? Your little brother? What about him? Your family God, Jesus. You trust everyone. Oh, okay. We're going to... Thank 
Thank you. I love you too. Okay, so today the question was, what is faith? And you, you seem to already know what it is. Faith is when we trust in God. Okay, so what, what is faith? That's the question. What is faith? Faith is trusting in God. Say that with me. What is faith? Trusting in God. Trusting in God. And, and trusting in God, God, we trust God. God makes some big promises. Someone says something about promises. And today we're having a baptism. We're going to baptize Birdie and Taylor. It's very exciting because when we baptize someone, we are telling them about God's promises. D does anyone know what God promises at baptism? You know? He promises to forgive us of our sins and to give us His Holy Spirit. And so the question is, do you trust God that He will do that? What do you think? Do you think God will really do that? Yes or no? Well, we're, yes, God will do that, okay? So what is faith? Trusting in God. Okay. But can you pray with me? Let's pray. Lord God, you made great promises. And we ask that you would give us faith to believe in those promises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm so excited to see all these children, but just a reminder, the children's church is from three years old through first grade. Everybody else gets to stay in here. <laughs> Go in peace, believe in Jesus. Let us pray for the reading of God's Word. O oh Lord, you tell us that we cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. And so we pray today as the scriptures are read and as they are heard, that you would give us our daily bread. Help us to hunger for this daily bread and help us to receive it with joy and to go forth nourished in obedience and faith. We pray these things through Jesus Christ our Lord and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. The first reading today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 12 through 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 12 through 16. Hear the reading. To the rest I say, I and not the Lord, that if any believer has a wife who is an unbeliever, and she consents to live with him, he should not divorce her. And if any woman has a husband who is an unbeliever, and he consents to live with her, she should not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is made holy through his wife. And the unbelieving wife is made holy through her husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean. But as it is, they are holy. But if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. In such a case, the brother or sister is not bound. It is to peace that God has called you. Wife, for all you know, you may save your husband. Husband, for all you know, you may save your wife. This is the word of the Lord. The next reading is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Second Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Hear the reading. Paul an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God 
for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Father, and Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did. When I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, the Wynn family joins Bethesda Presbyterian Church by reaffirming the faith and their girls, Taylor and Bertie. They will be baptized into the faith too. And so today I wanted to talk about faith. But as a fair warning, I wanted to talk about it by starting in a very odd place. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. In this part of the letter, the Apostle Paul talks about an incredibly tricky situation. You'll have to imagine what's going on. What should a person do if he or she becomes a Christian, but his or her spouse doesn't? Should you imagine that situation, how difficult it might be? Paul tells the congregation that if the unbelieving partner consents to live with the believing partner, then they should remain together and not seek to be separated. By the way, this is not the same advice he gives to those who are engaged or looking for a partner. Paul is clear that those who do believe should not marry those who don't. There is an implicit, why would you want to put yourself in this situation? As many of us know, it's hard enough living with someone who disagrees with you on how to set up the toilet paper or how to decorate for Christmas or whose house you will go to celebrate Thanksgiving. But in the case where this is already established, an established marriage bond, Paul says, stay together if the unbelieving spouse agrees to it. And if the unbelieving spouse doesn't, however, you may let them go for the sake of peace. But how can the Apostle Paul say this? Won't the unbelieving partner drag me down? Won't their disbelief be a constant temptation for me? Won't their disbelief be a window of disobedience for my life? And won't their unbelief mess up my faith? This is what makes Paul's advice so shocking. Because he is saying, actually, it's the other way around. Your faith may be a temptation to the unbeliever. Your faith may start to work on the unbelieving partner. You may draw that person in. He writes, The unbelieving husband is made holy through his wife, and the unbelieving wife is made holy through her husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. And again, this is, this is quite shocking. Because holiness, Paul says, is shareable. And holiness is communicated by faith. It isn't that faith is something that needs to be protected and hidden away from unbelievers. No, it's the other way around. The partner with faith is made holy by the Spirit. And that holiness is like a germ that spreads to the unbelieving spouse and their children. Holiness here is not about the faithful simply being separated from the world. No, it's about the faithful spreading holiness into the world. When one person in the home has genuine faith, it seems to contaminate the rest of the house. Holiness is more like that virus you had last week. It doesn't really matter if your spouse wants it or not. They're going to be in the bathroom just like you were the night before. Now, that doesn't mean that holiness is the same as salvation. 
Holiness means you've been set apart. You've been sanctified, or the buzzword for today is consecrated. Holiness is about belonging to God. Most importantly, it's about being brought into the sphere of the church that belongs to God so that you enjoy certain benefits. Yes, there are benefits to being a part of a church. More than just food and good fellowship, there's also a sense of protection. At night, the unbelieving husband heads to bed, but his believing wife stays up late and prays for protection over the house. The small child who doesn't have much understanding, they get sick but unknowingly receive healing through the prayers of their grandparents and parents. Or the rebellious teenager doesn't believe in God anymore, doesn't go to church anymore, but doesn't realize that through the family's faithful prayers, he has angels watching over his every step. What we see then is that faith in Scripture is not only about the depth of our personal convictions or how we think and feel about God. Faith is something more active and something more powerful. Faith is something that is alive. Not in itself, but it's made active and powerful and alive because of the mysterious opening in our lives through which God works. That's what faith is. It is the mysterious opening, the window in our lives through which God works, not only in our lives, but also the lives of others. And this is why Paul goes on to say to those who are thinking about divorce, divorcing their unbelieving partners, he says, Why, for all you know, you may save your husband. It's quite strong language. And he says, Husband, for all you know, you might save your wife. Your Faith, in other words, the trust that you have in God, in Jesus Christ, can be a means of blessing, protection, sanctification for others. Your faith, congregation, is the window through which the light of Jesus shines into the world. It's like a stained glass window. It's not your light, but it certainly shines through you. And it shines through you and it makes the place beautiful. Your faith may save others, which really raises the question whether your faith is really just yours. God has given you that faith, but that faith affects others, sometimes aggressively, sometimes openly, sometimes subtly and quietly, sometimes in ways you will never know this side of creation. But what is clear is that faith is like a beachhead or a door, a window for where God can get through and get hold of others in your life. And this isn't the only place we see this truth. The same apostle talks about it again in his second letter to Timothy. He tells Timothy, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I'm sure lives in you. Did you catch that? Your sincere faith, Paul, first lived in somebody else, in your grandmother. And her faith, before it came to her, lived in somewhere else. In other words, Paul is telling Timothy that your faith, your sincere faith, isn't just yours. You received it from someone else, and they received it from someone else too. It seems to have been passed down. It didn't fall out of the sky. It didn't emerge out of some crisis. And it isn't generated out of an overwhelming sense of guilt or sin. His faith first lived in his grandmother and then came alive in his mother. And now it comes alive again in Timothy. And this is really the opposite of how we usually think about faith. We often talk about faith as simply a choice, a choice to believe. How many times have we told people, just believe? How many times have we told people, take a leap of faith? We hear this kind of talk, but faith is not the creation or the movement of just our will. According to Paul, it's something that seems to be alive. And it's on the move And it's spreading. It's something that inhabits the life of others. 
And somehow we come into contact with it. And it starts to rub off on us. And then sometimes by the grace of God, it sinks in and it gets under our skin and into our heart. And it becomes our own faith. Sort of. Now, this is all helpful to keep in mind when we're baptizing little children. Because we're not baptizing them for the depth of their convictions or the knowledge about Jesus Christ, sin, and the life of the world to come. I did not pull Bertie and Taylor aside and evaluate them and examine how rich their theology was. Though children might surprise us. We're not baptizing them because of the robustness of their own personal faith. We are baptizing them into the faith. We are baptizing them into the faith. The faith that we share and the faith that opens our lives and theirs up to God. This is the same faith, the very same faith that Jesus Christ had when he prayed in the garden, not my will, but yours be done. This is the same faith that he had when he endured all those accusations and judgments and mockings and suffering. And when he was crucified, this was the faith that got him through. It's the very same faith that can save the world. This is the faith that saves and frees those who are bound and gives life to the dead. Congregation, today as we come around the baptismal font, we gather around to give up our prayers and our offerings. Hold on to that faith. And grandparents and grandparents and parents too, especially Jeff, and Christy, teach this faith and exemplify this faith to your little ones. And Taylor and Bertie, may God grant you a lively and sincere faith that one day you may share too. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. of faith. Whom does the session recommend to join the church through reaffirmation of faith and to be baptized today? Uh, All right. Come on up. If you'll stand over here for me. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Scripture also says, As many of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourself with Christ, there is no longer Jew or Greek, There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And obeying the word of our Lord Jesus and confident and trusting in His promises, we baptize them, those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death and unites us to Jesus Christ in His death and resurrection. By water... And the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament today. Jeff and Christy, do you wish for your children to be baptized? Taylor, do you wish to be baptized? Bertie? Would you like to be baptized? (laughs) Congregation, do you as members of the Church of Jesus Christ promise to guide and nurture this family, but specifically Taylor and Bertie, by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging them to know and follow Jesus Christ and to be faithful members of His church. If you do, say, we do. We do. 
Now together we will profess our faith. They are reaffirming, reaffirming the baptismal covenant as they say this creed together. Let us affirm our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. Please stand with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Um, you may be seated. As God embraces you with this covenant, I ask you to reject sin, profess your faith in Jesus Christ, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we're baptized. You've confessed that faith. Now we will renounce evil in the world. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If you do, say, I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept Him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in His grace and love? If you do, say, I do. And will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying His word and showing His love? If you will, say, I will with God's help. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation? Share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. If you will, say, I will with God's help. Amen. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We thank you, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all, sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. And in the time of Noah, you destroyed evil by the waters of the flood. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea and into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. And by the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ has set us free from sin and death and opened up the way of eternal life. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ and his death. And for through it we are raised to share in the resurrection by the power of the Holy Spirit. So send your spirit to move over this water, that it may be a fountain of all deliverance and rebirth. And pour out your Holy Spirit upon these, that they may have the power to do your will, continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, be all praise, honor, and glory now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Taylor, you stand right here. Taylor, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Here you go. Birdie, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, uphold Birdie and Taylor by your Holy Spirit and give them both the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of the knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. And defend them, O Lord, with your heavenly grace. And all God's people said, Amen. You're a child of the covenant. You are a child of the covenant. Amen. Now that they've been sealed with the cross and baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we welcome them to 
Bethesda Presbyterian Church, but also the Apostolic and Catholic Church. Please welcome them. May the peace of Christ be with you. At this time, you are welcome to pass the peace, especially bring the peace to the Wynn family. Peace. You did great. Peace. Peace, brother. Not letting up on you, I know. <laughs> Typically, do we will do some of these after service too. If we have certificates, we want you to sign, and also you can sign some of those certificates too. Thank you. Oh, okay, they already have them all. Do we have? We need witnesses, though, right? Okay. All right. Please be seated. Please be seated. This time as we give, let us remember, Christ calls us to be holy as He is holy.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Since this is Consecration Sunday, we'll be doing things a, a bit different than we normally do. If you would like to come forward and stand around the baptism before the holy table today and reconsecrate yourself through prayer, we invite you now to come forward. Don't be nervous. As we pray, let's remember the promise of the Lord. If we draw near to God, God will draw near to us. Please pray this prayer from where you are and by repeating after me. Come, O Holy Spirit. Come, o Holy Spirit. Come as holy fire and burn in us. Come as holy wind. And cleanse us within. And cleanse us within. Come, as holy light. Come as holy light. And lead us in the darkness. And lead us in the darkness. Come, as holy truth. Come as holy truth. And dispel our ignorance. And dispel our ignorance. Come, as holy power. Come as holy power. And enable our weakness. And enable our weakness. Come as holy life. 
and dwell in us. Convict us. Convert us. Consecrate us. Until we are set free. From the service of ourselves. To be your servants to the world. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This time, we will have a congregational meeting to elect representatives to the nominating committee. The nominating committee considers and puts forward a slate of elders and deacons, and in our case at Bethesda, also um, members of the preschool board. And they do this on behalf of the congregation for the congregation's consideration at a later date. If you're a member, you're entitled to vote and to nominate today. If you're not a member, you're entitled to enjoy this very quick, very quick process. Uh, last time we did this, we elected two representatives who were not allowed to be elected because they were on the session and a part of the diaconate. So today we are going to fix that. Uh, Mr. Clerk, I do believe we have a quorum so let us open with prayer. O oh Lord, we thank you that you have called us to this place. We ask you to give us wisdom and discernment as we prepare this nominating committee for the life of the church. Guide us, give us strength and grace, and help us to be expedient. In the name of Christ we pray and all God's people said. Amen. 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 So, so far we have Janet Peel, K. Mack, Carolyn Moore, um, Leslie, where are you? You're also here. And Alan White and Trinity Anderson, representing the youth, to compose the committee. But we need two more members at large who are not on the diaconate or a part of the session to be on this nominating committee. So now the floor is open for nominations. Terry Combs. Where's Terry? Do we have to have already masked the phone <laughs> <laughs> You were supposed to. That is, that is wise advice that I did give earlier. But we, if you have it and no one else gets nominated, we still may need you to surprise someone. <laughs> so let's, let's begin. We, we have had a nomination, Terry Combs. Uh, is there a second for Terry? Did you get that? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. So the motion carries by acclamation. We do have one. We still need one more. Oh. Pat McLaughlin. Where's Pat? You willing to serve? Okay. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor? Any nays? Okay. The motion carries. So we have Pat McLaughlin as well as Terry Combs who have been uh, nominated to be on the nominating committee. Do we have any more nominations? Seeing that there are no more nominations, uh, let's have a motion to... I move the nominations be closed. And to accept. And to accept those who have been nominated. Thank you. Uh, is there any discussion? Is there a second on this? Second. So we have a second back here. Willis has seconded it. All in favor? Aye. Any nays? Given there are no nays, the motion carries. So uh, we'll restate that. Craig, will you, you want to read it? 
the way you've written it. Yeah. Who's nominated here? Willis. Uh, Okay, we need one more motion. Do we have a second? The motion carries by consent. Okay, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the unity and the peace that our church has received this day. We pray that we keep this peace and unity in the spirit as we move forward to elect our officers. And we thank you and praise you for gathering us to this place. All praise, honor, and glory be to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Now let us close our congregation with a closing hymn. Please stand and let us sing 526, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. Keep the faith and share it too. And all God's people said, Amen. Go in peace. Amen.